Here is a 2023 Toyota Highlander XLE Hybrid Bronze Edition in cement graphite over soft tech interior. There's a lot of unique touches that they do on the exterior and on the interior for the Bronze Edition. It's going to be the same trim level as the XLE. I'm Anthony from Hawkeye Rides, and the XLE trim starts with LED headlights and daytime runnings with the fog lights, eight inches of clearance, matte black that's going to run on the lower trim. Gloss black is going to be the center and focal point of the grill. Kind of wish they would have threw some bronze instead of the satin aluminum. We get the blue emblem because this is the hybrid. Same engine option, 2.5 liter, four cylinder, producing a combined total of 243 horsepower and 175 pound-feet of torque paired to an eCVT transmission, which is an electronically controlled, continuously variable transmission, achieving 36 MPGs for the city, 35 MPGs for the highway. Now the bronze edition comes into play here with these 18 inch bronze alloy wheels. They are unique to the bronze edition, which the XLE will get an 18 inch machine finish, but it's not going to receive the same style. Optioning the non-hybrid gets a sport tune suspension. Here, it's gonna be the standard McPherson strut front and a multi-link rear. Satin aluminum for the roof rails and a touch of the chrome around the window treatment. Because this is the bronze edition, kind of wish they threw a little bit more so on the side or the front to make it stand out a little bit more. Going against comparable rivals like the new Honda Pilot or Kia Telluride, this is going to be better in your MPGs because it's a hybrid. They don't offer that with them. Towing will be less at 3,500 pounds. Go to the non-hybrid, 5,000 pounds. So it's spot on with the rivals in the bronze edition, gives you a digital rear view mirror. They put it right underneath the lower roof spoiler, which like I say in a lot of my reviews, the Highlander has a little bit more of a sporty exit because of that lower roof spoiler. Standard LED tail lights, lower is gonna get the matte black. It's gonna look the same as the standard XLE hybrid. Power lift gate that goes into 16 cubic feet of storage with a 12 volt underneath the floor. Get some storage in an area that you can put the privacy cover. Split fold the rear bench at a 60-40 split. That's going to increase the cargo to 48.4 cubic feet. Fold down those captain seats which increases cargo to 84.3 cubic feet, which is around 13 cubic feet less than the Grand Highlander. It sits up a little bit, but the opening is going to be just about the same as the Grand Highlander. This is a hybrid. Let's go inside, move it around so you can hear that exhaust. Sound. The bronze edition gets you the door seals that are illuminated, which is normally around $300. That comes into it with the contrast stitching and a new pattern design that's only found on the bronze edition with the piping right here. 10 way power seat adjustment for the driver, memory, and eight way power seat adjustment for the passenger, heated front seats. Headroom and leg room. There is no pass through. For the passenger side, you get a storage pocket. The Grand Highlander will add a USB port. The Bronze Edition gets this contrast stitching and it goes into a 12.3 infotainment screen with wireless Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. Sirius XM, AM, FM, streaming Bluetooth audio. Put it into reverse and you get a reverse camera. The lines do not move. Standard tri-climate control gloss black around the air vents in the center where you'll have the satin aluminum and the silver around the sides. Working into a QI wireless charging pad, USB ports, 12 volt storage area here, the key fob for the Highlander. Leather around the shifter with the gloss black and satin aluminum, driving mode select, sport, normal, and eco and you have your full EV. It's gonna be more sporty with that contrast stitching yet again. Slides open with a storage tray that can be lifted and taken out. It's a deep storage pocket with a 12 volt charger. Steering wheel is three spoke multi-function adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist, the stocks, 
And the gauge cluster has a TFT display that can go through different settings and information for the driver. No heads up display, but the bronze edition gives you a digital rear view mirror, a moonroof for the front and the door panels and dash more or less integrating together and it has a pretty sporty effect, especially the way this bulges out more so. Everyday material up top, software it needs to be, the bronze contrast stitching one touch up and down for the windows, and a long storage pocket with a couple of beverage holders carved out. For the second row, headroom and leg room. Storage behind both of the front seats, third climate control, USB ports, and a home plug. Cup holders in the center with a storage pocket for the third row. Air vent's gonna be right in the ceiling in front of my face. Manual sunshade start on the door panel. Oh yeah, captain seats. You can slide them forward so you can give more space to the third row. And you can recline these back so you can just relax and enjoy a long journey. Going back to the door panel, same materials are found in the front, soft where it needs to be with that bronze stitching and a large storage pocket with about three beverage holders carved out. To go into the third row, pull the lever, slide it forward, and that's the entrance that you had. At six foot three, it's still doable. Leg space is going to be shared by the rails. We're gonna slide this back. It's about medium in leg space. I'm kind of grazing the back of the seats. This is all the way back and reclined. Two cup holders are found on both sides with the air vents in the roof and headroom is actually doable. Going into the center, we have it all the way back reclined so you'll lose a little bit of cargo. Headroom will be pretty much against this light, but you'll have a little bit more leg space because you're sitting in the center but in shoulder space will be shared because of the way the cup holders bulge out on the sides. The Bronze Edition XLE Hybrid. 243 horsepower combined, 175 pound-feet of torque combined. You can already tell the sound deadening is not going to be enough to block out this guy's stereo system. You know what? It's all good. I'm gonna relax and enjoy my ride. Power is good though. When you push the throttle, it really goes in sport mode. They don't option a V6 anymore either. So you're going to have to go into a turbocharged, which has 262 horsepower. It's down in horsepower, but 310 pound-feet of torque. It's more torque. Here, 3,500 pounds of towing. The turbo will be 5,000 pounds of towing. Same interior specs except for the seating, which is going to take me to some pros and cons before we get to some performance. The pros, I like that you get a few amenities that make this vehicle different opposed to the XLE Hybrid. The cons, the third row doesn't get any of those amenities. Before we get back to that, let's give her a go. what I mean it's pretty quick for a hybrid 36 mpgs over 35 mpgs if you're one of those fans of hybrids you're gonna love this vehicle the drive to it is also comfort the seat cushion is good because it's 18 inch wheels it's not over the top it soaks up any imperfections we don't have a sport tuned suspension so it's a little bit more basic but it's also an everyday vehicle that you're trying to save MPGs. Going back to my pros, I like that we get the contrast stitching throughout and we get the pattern design, but it's a unique pattern. It's a little bit better and than a basic XLE. On the exterior, con, I would have liked to see a little bit more bronze element only because we are getting a premium, but we do get the digital rear view mirror, which was a huge selling point for me when I was looking for a new SUV. It doesn't feel very wide and it feels a little bit more sporty. So if you're looking for something a little bit more athletic, you go to the Highlander. If you're looking for something a little bit more grand, you go for the Grand Highlander. Because it's a bronze edition, it would have been nice to get acoustic side windows. And you can see what I mean. This thing is pretty dynamic. I mean, if you're running late for work, you need to get somewhere quick, and you want to save an MPGs, hybrid's the way you go, and you don't need a sport-tuned suspension, which you would get in the turbo variant. The only downfall is every time you hit the throttle, you will hear that engine, 
and it's not going to sound like a V6. It's going to sound a little bit more like a drone. Same braking as the XLE hybrid. Turn radius at a stop point. This key is not going to be nice, but I get two lanes. We're an EV, but as soon as you push it at all, it will automatically disengage full EV because you have to really drive it soft. The handling on the car is good. The steering does feel light, so it doesn't have any kind of TRD feel to it, which you wouldn't expect that because there's nothing to this suspension. It's standard McPherson Strug multi-link rear. You sit up a little bit higher, but this is also known for pretty much all of the Toyota line, in which for an everyday variant vehicle, I'm all right with that. You need to come to a hard stop, you can do so, and you're not going to go through the windscreen. Some other cons about the vehicle is there isn't any pass-through. The center cluster is huge. They do give you a lot of cubbies throughout, especially in the dash. And each section has somewhere that you can put something. So it's not lacking in cargo or storage capacity. It just would be a little bit more user-friendly. And the center, kind of wish this opened up standard or more traditional, because when you open it up in the center, you do lose some clearance of putting items inside side but it is a deep storage pocket also 14 cup and bottle holders found throughout the cabin it's more than enough you got it in sport mode it has so much power underneath the front wheels that it will get tire happy if you don't watch Going back to some more pros, the air vents are stationed in the headliner for the second and third row, which makes it a more pleasant ride for a long or short journey. Smooth driving vehicle and great MPGs. But let me know your thoughts in the comments. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Check out the next video, merchandise, website, and Instagram. Leave a comment and a like. And I'd like to thank Stadium Toyota for giving us this 2023 Toyota Highlander XLE Hybrid Bronze Edition for our car review.